When you think of Halloween games, I'm sure there's a few that come to mind. Costume Quest, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, and hell, even games like Monster Party fit the bill. But last year, a little game by the name of Pumpkin Jack was released, mere days before Halloween and also after the Huntober videos for that year were already completed, so... While it didn't make the cut for that series, we still took a look at it over on the Twitch channel, and to my and everybody else's in the chat surprise, it was an absolute blast to play through. We basically went through about halfway of the game, then stopped because of time constraints and also had to swap over to some other things. And I finished it off stream, and honestly, it was one of the best games I played of that year. It's fun, it's quirky, it's got a nice little fallish charm to it. It also takes the tired trope of, you good, go jump and smash your way through these worlds to beat evil, and flips it on its head because in this game, you play as the villain. So without further ado, let's be on our merry way as we start our adventure with one of the stingiest protagonists in games. Once upon a time, in the great Arkansil Kingdom, the world lived in peace and coexistence between the humans, the animals, the birds, even the cute little bunny rabbits. It was an age of prosperity without anything to fear of war, famine, catastrophe. It was so very boring. So boring, in fact, that even the devil himself was bored brainless. The devil dreamed of bloodshed, pestilence, suffering on a cosmic scale. So, he devised a plan to make things in Arkansas a little more entertaining. The devil unleashed the curse of the Eternal Night. A powerful spell that conjured mindless, soulless, heartless monsters across the world. The monsters lay waste to every city, every home, every leaky outhouse, and backwater town in the kingdom. It was beautiful, but for some reason, the humans quite enjoyed their safe, boring little lives. They couldn't handle a few pesky monsters coming in and tearing them all limb from limb. So, they called upon their champion. The mighty wizard. A sorcerer with the skill and intellect to break the curse and usurp the devil's power. The wizard departed his luxurious tower in his studies to find the power he needed to break the curse of the eternal night. Very well, the devil said. Two can play that game. And who knows, this might be the fun I've been looking for. So in response to the wizard's quest, he called upon a champion of his own. Stingy Jack, <laughs> history's greatest trickster and con artist, banished to wander the world as a wayward spirit. The devil crammed Jack's soul into the skin of a pumpkin and made him a deal. The devil would forgive Jack's past misdeeds and grant him passage to the afterlife. And in return, he gave Jack one simple mission. Find the wizard and destroy him. Alright, so here we are. We got our boy Jack and his uh nice threads, I guess. Huh, this world is a mess, so the devil meant what he said about total death and destruction. Looks like I it's doing fine as is, but he still needs me to get rid of that pes of some pesky wizard. I don't know about you, it looks like it's pretty, you know, destructive already. D did he really need me for this? Which begs the question, what kind of wizard can't the devil get rid of himself? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look who bothered to show up. I trust you haven't already lost your brain in that gourd. Grown men have died for less than that bird. 
tardy and insubordinate. Not an amazing first impression, Jack. Ugh. Who are you? How do you know my name? I'm a servant of the devil, and I'm here to monitor your work. The devil hasn't forgotten your pension for trickery, Jack. He doesn't trust you. Ugh. Just don't slow me down. I haven't forgotten how to roast a chicken. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just remember who gave you that fancy new body. Speaking of which, let's begin your orientation. Ugh. Orientation? What kind of fool do you take me for? The kind who spent centuries in crop... in corporeals. Now, stop dawdling. It's time to get acquainted with your new form. I don't know what it really needs to be acquainted of. You can just, you know, run, jump, and do about everything I could do as a while alive. But, ah, uh, well, let us continue on our merry way. It would be wise to drink from these cauldrons. The primordial stool, uh, stew holds your bo new body together. You can double jump to boot. How? Your body is magical, you dope. So, scattered throughout these levels are two types of collectibles. One of which is this, crow skulls. In some cultures, crow skulls are luck to ward off evil. The other collectible out here are record players. You will find one in each level, and they contain a little haunting melody for you to listen to if you get them. The crow skulls also have a function outside of just being like collectibles to get throughout the level, but for now at least we're going to hold off on the explanation of those until we get to the reason that you would need to collect a lot of these skulls. For now we're just going to do some double jumps. Up on down here. Scare away this crow. And you really do want to keep an eye out for the crow skulls. They do have a actually somewhat useful use outside of, you know, just collection purposes. There's number three. We're probably not going to get all of these in the main run just because some of them are actually really well hidden and it's kind of lost me on the location of some of the more hard to find crow skulls, but there are some that I've actually been able to easily find because, well, the devs were kind enough to just lay them as a sort of pathway marker throughout your adventure. Woohoo! Not bad so far, Jack. I've shaken off those cobwebs well. Well, it does feel good to have my own body again. Arms, legs, everything. You really put them to the test from here. There will be monsters ahead. Shouldn't sh you shouldn't have any trouble fighting them off. Well, I've never been one to turn down the chance to bash some heads in. But why should they attack me? Has nobody told them I'm on their side? They can't hold anything, Jack. Monsters are mostly mindless miscreants. They can barely tell each other apart, let alone something like you. Pumpkin or not, you're still human. That alone makes you their target. So that's why the devil needs me. He needs someone who can think like a man. This new enemy is clever, Jack. He needs someone just as clever. I see. And he doesn't mind that I'm cutting down his monsters? Ooh, they're practically worthless. Do what you must, just get the job done. Alright, if you say so. Well, before I do anything like that, always when it comes to this type of game, Never go on the beaten path, always go off to the side to see if there's any collectibles because more often than not, the game does hide collectibles just slightly off the pathway it gives you. you press the A button to do a little dodge roll to avoid attacks and also hazards around the environments. Up up here. Actually, no, I need to be on the box first. There we go. Up up here. Ow. Ugh. Yeah, these things actually do significant damage, so you want to be careful if you acci accidentally do get hit by them. So far, I don't see any crow skulls, but I do see a lot of crows. Hmm, maybe I can harvest a nearly endless bounty of skulls from these guys. Ah! It's back! It's back! Flap away, everyone! Flap for your lives! Oh, great, more birds. Let me through before I pluck you all raw. S stay away from my scarecrow! I've got claws and I can use them. Me, a common scarecrow? I'm Jack, the greatest rogue to ever live. W wait, he got legs. The scarecrow doesn't have legs. And his head isn't stuffed with straw. See, I'm no scarecrow. Now let me through you, Corvid creeps. Ka! Not so fast, it seems birds have the upper hand for once. We'll let you through, Mr. Jack, if you help us in return. 
at the mercy of a crow. What do you want? A scarecrow often appears at that barn just ahead. He's been terrorizing us for weeks. He's a menace to crow kind. And I suppose you want me to get rid of him? Yes, yes. And I'll help you to boot. My wings are swift and my beak is sharp. Hmm, some air support would be useful. Very well, bird. Kaka! Huzzah! Death to straw face menace! Let's go! Oh, now we at least have a way to attack enemies, so we get get because we got a little crow, buddy. I'm ready, Jack. Let's crow. So press the L button, send the crow out to attack. Now we could go that way to go to the cauldron and continue on with the level, but first things first, I want to go over here. Because sitting back here is our record player. There we go. Got the gramophone. So yeah, it's a nice little collectible. If you get some music, you get to see Jack bust a move out in the field. And they actually aren't that hard to find because I've been able to find all the record players, or the, the gramophones, pretty easily. So let's just go around here, make sure we're not missing any of the crow skulls. And but I do feel like I might have missed like one, maybe like back at the starting area. Deadheads, dead ahead. Avoid the shots, because these are basically like little turret guys. Just shoot the crow at them, and we're good. And would you look at that? Who who shovels hay? It feels like more of a pitchfork or a rake would have been a better tool for this than a shovel. <laughs> it's mostly rust, but I suppose any weapon is better than none. I can press Y and we can attack. Oh, that's just a dummy. I thought that was actually another one of the deadhead uh, statues. But nope, it was a crow skull. You got a fourth hit combo. The fourth combo will do basically a little spin attack that can hit all enemies around you. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie if the combat in this game is a little basic. But then again, it is a starting weapon and as we get the other weapons throughout the game, it, the combat actually gets pretty intense and actually a lot more fun. But as it stands, we must now just bash enemies with a shovel. Won't be the first time I've had to beat enemies to death with a shovel. Bust the door down, Jack. Really put some wood. Checkpoint. Take a nice little drink. Enjoy the view. And let's just go around here. I could have sworn that there was also a crow skull around here as well, but I guess not. Up here. Aha! There it is. You can kind of get an idea where a crow skull is hiding because it does make it like a little chirping sound. Also, you know, the, the glowing red and the red eyes also kind of give away the location to crow skulls. But if you need, can't, like, figure out where it is by vision, just listen for that little cawing sound and you'll be able to get into the problem. Alright, there we go. Uh, he's starting some combat. Got another crow skull. Just avoid these guys when they lob their things. Do little dodge rolls, and you should be good. These guys are pretty easy to deal with. You also do a little bit of an overhead attack every time you dodge an enemy, which is sort of like a repost. So you dodge roll, then you do like the attack immediately after you get out of the roll, and it does like an overhead swing, which I believe does a little bit more damage, or it just helps keep the combat combo going. Grab ourselves another skull, and let's head over here, because we did see a green light sticking out from over here, and there seems to be someone at said green light. Wait, wait! Don't hurt me! Uh, eh? You can talk? Yes, I am not here to hurt you, sir. Uh, Are you sure? You look more like a monster to me. Uh, Rotten, half-dead, soulless. Of course, I'm a salesman. Uh, oh. Uh, well, now I just want to kill you anyways. No, no, no! Stop! At least browse my wares first. What are you selling? Skins! I harvest the skins off interesting dead people for other people to wear. Clothes, too. Oh, right. Well, I don't want to kill you, but I want a discount. By all means, please take a look. So, I think it's actually kind of uh, ingenious that the person to sell you skins in this game is a skin taker skeleton. 
that's actually a really ingenious thing that they did, and I really do like it. But yes, uh, here's what the use of the Crow Skulls have. You can buy different skins for Jack to play through the game. You don't have to pay any money for it. You can just go through here and just, you know, just get a different look for him. The price goes up by five every single time, except for when you get to the Inspector, then to the Skeleton. When, in that case, it goes up to ten. We'll just keep Jack as he is for now, but I think in between every single level, if I do have the money for skins, I probably will invest into it as we go into a new, new level. Because some actually do have a fitting theme for the level, others don't. So, Squirrel Gear is just telling us about how you can break basically anything for health because they all have monsters' essences here. So it's a good thing to be as destructive as possible in case you really do need to get some health back. So we're getting into some more combat soon. If, as you can see with the crow skull up there, we actually saw with the last skull by the skin taker. Uh, the skull up there is black instead of like the regular like bone white crow skull. That's because the skull is locked until we are done with this whole combat challenge here. Once we get all the enemies, the skull unlocks and we can go collect it. Here we go. Heading on down to here. Got ourselves another cauldron, and I can hear another skull float around somewhere. There it is. And already halfway through the skulls. I think I might have actually gotten all those skulls in the past area then. But knowing my luck, I probably missed like one or two. Again, I feel like I did miss a skull like at the very beginning where Jack lands into the real world. Hop on over here, hop on over here. And wait for this little turnstile. I guess these are more yeah, these are more like windmills or No, they're they're just straight up windmills. But who, who would want to build a windmill with this thing underneath it? It feels like it would be a you know, big waste. Let's hop up over here again, because there's a skull right up here. It's also kind of hard to get to because, you know, uh, as much as I say that the, the platforming in this game and the controls are pretty solid, Jack does not take corners very well when it comes to jumping in the air, so you want to be very careful when going up them. See another skull flitting off in the distance, and I see a couple of dead heads sitting right there, so we're going to just use Crow to take care of them. Head on over here for our next skull. And if I remember right, there's two or three skulls in this area alone, that's why it's such a big area. I'm not talking about the one that's up on top of that little tower back there. But, like, there's actually a proper skull sitting down here somewhere. Aha! There you are. Alright, cool. Let's have Crow go take care of all of these deadheads. Take care of the skeleton boy. He also sends Crow to attack the skeletons. He's basically just, like, a weak range attack, which... It's good if you need to keep like a high combat uh, combo going. Or if you just want to peck enemies from a distance. But Crow does not do a whole lot of damage. And in fact, one of the cool things about this is the fact that enemies will also damage each other. Because as you saw, the deadhead behind that skeleton shot him and actually did some damage to him as well. I'm not hearing any chirping. I don't see any red in the distance. So I think we're good on Crow Skulls for the moment. So for now, let's head over to Owl and see what how we are supposed to get into this barn. Hmm, perhaps your new body is needed here. Hop out for a minute and look inside. Hop out of my body? Of course, your new body is just a shell. You can always use your head, hoo hoo. Oh, oh, wait, you mean he can get out of that thing? That's disgusting. Cram it, bird. Up to it, Jack. Drop your body and head inside. Hoo hoo hoo. All right. Well, seeing as how our body's just literally a shell that our pumpkin head is attached to, just gonna spin this boy right off our shoulders and hop on down. I hear a crow skull chirping, but I believe that is actually up in the barn itself. Because I don't think there's ever any skulls in these little pumpkin head challenges. But these are mostly sort of just, you know, puzzle challenges down here. We, we can move around. We can do a little spin attack to move things around. We'll hit that. 
knock this crate onto that little lift right there. Actually, get it up right up against the back wall if I can angle it just right. Okay, I guess that's good enough. Hop back up on, on here, raise the lift, and take this box and knock it on over here, and hit the switch to open the front door. Open sesame. I, I do kind of like the fact that they the devs didn't make the little pumpkin headed challenges its own like area and it's actually a part of the world itself because we as you could hear down there we could hear the crow skull chirping and I believe it is actually up here. Yep, back here. So yeah, it actually just takes you another to another part of the level, and it's not just, oh, hey, this is just the bonus room for this challenge alone, but it's actually organically put into the level, which is something I always praise. It's just tiny details in that in games. Uh oh, the wrong button, and now we got rats! These guys are constantly going to keep coming out of that rat hole in the corner, so it's take care of that bony boy for a second, head on over here, and just keep breaking the, this rat hole until it is officially destroyed. And we're done. Although, it's not a guarantee after you break it that it will stay permanently broken, because there's more often than not a chance that a, one or two more rats will pop out of the side just because it, they run on a timer and not on the, the fact that it's there or not. Up on down here for Crow Skull number 16. Someone needs to tell that rat to get off that one note that it's playing over and over again. Right here. There it is. I see it. No, wait, no, that's a dead head. I think it's... Yeah, it's over there somewhere, but I think it's like on the other side of this wall. Right. Up on over here. Take care of this. Let's see, there's more rats down there, and there's a the skull that we were hearing. Oh, is there another rat hole? Nope. Yeah, for as simplistic as the combat in this game looks, it actually is like one of the most fast-paced combat systems I've seen in the game like this to date. Just because of, of that dodge roll. That dodge roll does so much to just make it feel like, oh, hey, this is actually fast and intriguing. Hmm, you guys seem very out of place here. Why would there be snowmen in the middle of fall? And in a barn, no less. I feel like those guys should have been melted by now. Can't make the jump over there, so we're gonna need to remember the location of that skull for now. Instead, go this way. Grab the skull that's back here. I don't hear any chirping, but I think there might be a skull in the next room. Grab the one right there. And we're only just two skulls short of getting them all in this level. And I went the wrong way because of the very, like, heavy blue light in this area. Hop up here, hop on over here, go around this, don't fall off. I don't hear any chirping, but I do see a bubbling cauldron, so let's take ourselves a nice little drink. Let's head down here, and I think I did actually miss two skulls uh, before we could get into here. Uh-oh, Jack, I think you just knocked over a candle or something. Nonsense, I didn't do it. The skeletons did. It's not my fault they're clumsy. After all, Al told me they were brainless. Although, this does seem like it's a bit of a problem. Why is there even a room with this many candles in a barn? Do you smell smoke? No, but I do see fire. We gotta flap out of here, Jack. 
Run, Jack! The barn is collapsing! Who built this barn anyways? Who would have thought that dry straw and hay could burn so fast? Everybody! Everybody dig crow! Speaking of crow, there's also another crow skull in this little running section. It's also pretty easy to miss because I remember my first time playing through this. I think I ran past it because I was more focused on not burning alive than I was collecting little collectibles. And I'm over here, and I feel like I did actually miss a one crow skull back before the farm section. Unless it's actually, like, right at the very end, which is plausible, but I'm not pro thinking it's actually there. I also have to take the moment while we're running through this burning, collapsing barn to praise the music of this game. It really does, like, have that, that very, like, spooky, fun music, because it, they make a lot of use out of a theremin. And it really does fit, even though sometimes it feels like more, less, like, creepy Halloween-ish game and more I'm about ready to be abducted by aliens, like something out of Destroy All Humans. But, we made it out, we're safe. Now I gotta get out of here before someone makes me pay for all this damage. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm an agent of the devil. No one's gonna make me pay for anything. Wow, you read the place, Jack, but I don't see that awful scarecrow. He must be back in the fields. Well, after that heroin experience, I definitely need a drink. Just a quick look around to make sure that maybe this is where the crow skull is hiding. Hmm. I feel like it would be the place for it, but actually, no, it may be up here. I hear it. And I think I see it. There we go, sitting back here, skull number 20, and we are done with this level 100%. Don't expect that for the next couple of levels, because I know for a fact that some of the later levels in this game, who boy do they like to hide those skulls pretty well. Who goes there? Show yourself. But there he is, Kaka. He's just as menacing as always. Don't be so craven. It's just a bog standard scarecrow. D did he see me? Please tell me he didn't just see me. Ha ha ha! Well, look who's here, back for more fun, little birdie. Ka! He saw me! Flee, flee, flee! Stop wetting yourself as for you, it's time for you hopped away. Hey, 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 I heard you were skulking around here, Jack. We dim-witted monsters not cutting it out for the old man, hmm? I have my own business, Scarecrow. If you don't get out of my way, I won't mind turning you into kindling. The devil has the gall to send some wayward soul to do our jobs for us. Well, we'll show him all you humans are for living or dead. I'll bury you again, you wretch. All right, boss time. I feel like Scarecrow should not be T-posing up in the air, but who cares? Well, he's up in the air, send Crow after him after he does his little attack, and go up there and give him a couple smacks. After a smack attack, he will basically do a ground pound, but if you just stay back here, he will never hit you. After the ground pound attack, it will send some more minions up here to take care of you, which is honestly a really lazy way for a boss to do something, because I feel like the boss should be more involved into the battle instead of just sending wave after wave of minions after you. Hop back up into the air, T-poses, send a crow, rinse, repeat, and that's basically it. Let me just stay back here. I feel like the devs might have accidentally made the, the shockwave attack too small because there's definitely a, just a, I can just stand over here and you will not do anything to me. So I feel like that might have been a mistake on their part and they just forgot to increase the range of a shockwave. Up in the air, t him once more. Send Crow after him. Beat him up one more time and we are done. And for our troubles, we get ourselves a new weapon. 